Team Now reporter Morgan Parrish joins us live from Monroe Elementary where a vigil was held just an hour ago. Morgan, have you been speaking with community members? Hey, Chancellor. Good evening. Yeah, I've been speaking with a lot of community members, neighbors, and, you know, the shooting happened Thursday, and still it is tugging at all of our hearts. It is all just really difficult to understand, to comprehend, and neighbors say they are still trying to make sense of it all. And some people say it is like living in a real-life horror movie. I feel like I'm going to pass out. I just have a mental breakdown after breakdown. I feel like I'm gonna pass out. I just have a mental breakdown after breakdown after breakdown. It's just, oh my God. I am so wore out from crying and just, I, I didn't wanna see them babies laying on that ground. It's a visual I'll probably never forget always be stuck in my head till probably the day I die. Richard King Cannon lives right across the street from where the shooting happened. He tells me this isn't the first time he's witnessed frightening behavior from 32 year old Chad Dorman. He was just an angry, angry dude. Dorman has been charged with three counts of aggravated murder after he allegedly shot his three sons execution style. They actually tried to revive him when they got here, but I mean a bullet to the head. There's not much you can do about it. Richard says he watched in horror. Just as simple as pointing his rifle down right in the head, bam, and walked right back up here and just sat on that porch like nothing ever happened. As a father of a three-year-old son, he was willing to risk his own life to save the three boys. Before I could even get over there, because I was going to see if he would shoot me, like I'm ready. I've, I've done live my life. You know, and cops just, it, it was a, a swarm. I couldn't do anything. I was helpless. As he copes with this nightmare, Richard says his only hope is to put this trauma behind him. I just, I want to get out of here. I'll be able to get out of here next week when they get back, and I'll, I'll never come back to this spot again, ever. Never. I'll take my candle, and I'm going to put them boys' names on there, and I'm going to put it up in my house. And I'm going to build me a little collage. Because I've seen them out there playing every day, man. So happy. Just happy kids. So just a heartbreaking story, you know, just hearing from neighbors and community members here at this vigil tonight at Monroe Elementary. We know that there has been several vigils. We know that even more are to come. And even here at the elementary school, just yesterday I was out here and they were having grief counseling services for anybody who may need help. So again, we know that that GoFundMe is set up. People are still donating. And if you'd like to learn more, we have a link on our website so you can reach out. Chance. Yeah, that outpour from the community continues to flow in as we just saw. Now take a look here at a GoFundMe page that has set up by the aunt of the boys. The page has an original goal of raising only $20,000, but just three days since the tragic murders, donations are now reaching over $130,000 and are continuing to climb. Still, police have not released a possible motive, but we are continuing to ask that question. Our team is also reaching out to family members and others who know Chad Dorman. As we get updates, we will share them on air, online, and on our free news app. You can scan the QR code now to download the app. When we come back, we're learning.